Okay, the dogs and I have been concerned about encountering bikers that ride too close to us when we're on trail walks. And we were thinking that a lot of folks just don't realize that we don't know they're back there. So I'm trying to think of a way to give the bikers a message. So I want them to see something as they approach us. And it might be too late once they read my shirt, but maybe if they even see the shirt as they whiz by, maybe they'll think twice the next time they whiz by. So I went to Walmart and Academy this morning. I didn't get or find exactly what I wanted, but I brought several substitutes. The best Walmart had for reflective vests was these. And I went ahead and purchased it. It was pretty cheap, just in case I couldn't find anything else. But you have to pull it over your head. And I carry a lot of other stuff, including a uh, backpack for my walking stick. So this will prove uh, uh, inconvenient. Plus, it's really light color, and I don't think they show up well in the daytime, even though it has reflective strips for night. Most of my walks are during the day. So I went to Academy and found this orange hunting vest. And you can slip it on, and it zips in the front. And it has lots of utility pockets. I don't think it'll reflect at night at all, but the orange, you can probably definitely see it during the day. And I brought a large size, so that way if I'm carrying my walking cane on my back, the vest can go over it. Or I might try to think of an alternative for carrying my walking cane. We'll see how it works, because this could uh, ruffle up the letters. Now, I couldn't find any cloth at Walmart, so I just bought a regular t-shirt. And what I'm going to do is iron on letters on the back, and then I'm going to put the t-shirt on the back of the vest. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to just use a few clothespins, uh, not clothespins, but safety pins to attach it to the vest. So that way, if I want to detach it and wear it as a t-shirt later, I can. And, or I could sew it on. I have some needles here, different sizes. And I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna use thin, regular sewing thread or use something thick like this crochet thread. Now, the way I plan to get the letters on the back is to use my inkjet printer, inkjet printer and type, well, uh, do it on my computer, then print it out on these t-shirt transfers. Now, these are made for light colored cloth. You can also buy them for dark colored cloth. And what you do is, once you have your image on the computer, you tell your computer to print a mirror image so that way you print on the print side of the paper. It's going to print backwards like a mirror. Then you place it facing down on the t-shirt and iron it in. I've already placed eight and a half by 11 paper on top of my t-shirt. And as you can see, the paper fits in between my shoulder blades, which means I can take up the whole size of the paper. So the first paper will have nothing but the word bikers on it. And what I was hoping to do was three different pages, bikers please announce. But I don't think I'm going to have enough room. So the first page will be bikers, and then the next page will say, please announce. And that'll have me almost down to my waist, I think. I'm pretty close. A couple other things I thought of. I want to make sure they see the letters, especially if I do happen to be out at night. So I purchased one of these things that uh, is made for bikes, and I thought about maybe sewing it on to the cuff or the collar or the top of the vest. It's a little heavy, not sure if it'll work or if it might blind bikers if it's at night, if it's too bright. So I also looked into one of these. It looks like a little light for your doggy's collar. I bought it in the dog section at Academy. And I have some of these hooks and I might be able to just hook it onto, hook the hook onto the back of the vest and then hook this to the hook. All right, I'm getting ready to start operations. It's 12.05 p.m. and we'll see if the dogs will leave me alone for a couple hours and maybe I can get this done. Okay, I got my two pages done in PowerPoint. I'm ready to do a test page. It's 12.30. Bikers, please announce. And I need to print a mirror image. And this is, my, this is a new print, this is a new computer, so hopefully this works. I'm going to go to File, Print, and go to Printer Properties. And Advanced. 
and several options here and mirror image right now is turned off. I'm gonna click it and turn it on and hit okay. And right now I'm just gonna print to regular computer paper and see what happens. Well, 1235, as luck would have it, my printer is acting up. I just unplugged it to reset it. Hopefully that'll fix it, we'll see. All right, so printed on regular paper, it printed a mirror image and it fills the page and hopefully it's seeable somewhat. So now we're gonna try to put in the transfer paper. The trick is to make sure it prints on the correct side. I believe my printer kind of prints upside down. So we're gonna put it in face down and see what happens. All right, 1250 and we have it printed on the correct side and we have it printed in a mirror image. Now we need to iron it on. Have to get the iron pretty hot and you have to press really hard. And of course the hard part is going to be keeping everything straight. It's not really supposed to be that aesthetically pleasing but we do want it to be noticeable. When you iron, make sure that you go all the way to the edges and make sure that the edges are well ironed down. It might even be good to start out in the middle then iron out to the edges. And remember to press down firmly and make sure every part is ironed down. And once you're done, then you give it several minutes to cool down before you peel off the backing. All right, 110, and I think I have it ironed down sufficiently. I'm gonna wait about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I went outside and picked up some poop and took in some laundry, let's see what our product looks like. I'm gonna start very carefully on the edge and start pulling. I'm gonna need both hands, I've turned off the camera. I'm peeling very carefully here because I want the pleat to actually stay down and just pull up the backing and so far it's looking okay. Okay, I'm about 20 paces away and I can still read it. I'm gonna go a little closer so we can take a look at it. I'm pretty happy with how it came out, but here's some things I did wrong. If you remember, it was two sheets of paper here and here. And when I printed out bikers, I should have either printed it further down the page instead of the middle of the page, or I should have trimmed the applique before I ironed it down. Because now, because of the two pages, I have this huge gap in between bikers and please announce. So we'll remedy that for next time. But in a way, maybe the gap is good. Maybe folks will see the word bikers and they'll slow down to read the rest, thinking we're talking to them. So the, now the next step is to put it on my vest. It's about 1.30. I'm doing okay with time, so I think I might go ahead and try to sew. And my first issue is what to do with the sleeves. I could bring them around and tuck them inside the vest and maybe sew them in that way. I could just cut them off, but this t-shirt might be useful, but I think what I'll do is tuck them under and tack them down and then sew the shirt on. I decided to go with the bigger thread and the, and the bigger needle just because it's easier to handle, easier to see. And I've run, I've already thread the needle and I've run it through. And I'm going to double my string. Okay, I've run it all the way through. I have it doubled. I'm going to tie a knot on the end. I like to just wrap it around my finger push and twist, then grab and pull, and now you have a knot so it won't go all the way through when you sew. Well, I have one side tacked down, or tacked together actually. I don't even know if it's visible since, um, let me see if I can zoom in here, since I'm using white thread on a white t-shirt. I'm going to also try to tack this side down. Using this big needle wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. It's kind of hard pushing it through the cloth since it's not very porous. I might, when I get ready to start sewing on the vest, I might have to change needles. We'll see. But as you can see, I'm having a little difficulty getting it through. And it doesn't have to be really sewn well here. I'm just tacking it down in a few places so it won't fall down while I'm walking. Sleeves are tucked down and under, and now I just laid the shirt in the back of the vest, and I'm going to start tacking it down at the shirt's collar to the vest collar. The first part will be pretty easy because the top part of the vest is mesh. 
and I'm not going for looks at all here but I do want it to stay on I'm just pushing the needle through bringing it back over and looping and pushing it through again pushing it to the back pulling it through looping it over to the front and pushing through to the other side again and we'll do something like that all the way around the vest now of course if you're not into sewing you could always use these safety pins and just put them all the way around but I will be concerned about pins even though they are safety pins if a dog jumps on you or something and one of the pins comes apart you don't want to hurt yourself or hurt the dog's foot so that's why I decided not to use these but still this is better than nothing or you can just wear the shirt as is without putting it on a vest well, it's about one fourth done and this started bunching up the sleeves that I had tacked down on the inside so I'm also going to sew the sleeves behind the shirt I'm going to sew them down to the vest okay it's about 225 and this is what I have as of right now it looks okay but I sewed one arm another way one way and then I decided it was better to loop it around so it it's gonna be a little uneven but just lessons learned for the next time I make one and I didn't notice this but my stitching is a lot tighter on this end than it is on this end I don't know how or why I did that but I'm gonna leave it as is for now I think it'll work and uh, I just sewed across the shoulder and I sewed the arms in I decided to leave this part hanging for now because I really don't want to sew into the plastic part and create a lot of big holes and plus I'm thinking if my vest gets bunched up the shirt will still be hanging down but if it doesn't work this way I can always come back and stitch this part down next is attaching some type of light of course maybe later too maybe I can go back and try to find some reflective tape to put maybe across here or across here okay I put the light on and uh, not sure if it's going to be visible in the daytime or not. I'm going to zoom in. It's just a little flashing red light. And right now I just hung it on a little flap that was already on the vest. I think what I'd like to do is maybe get two small lights and put them here and here. So that way hopefully the biker word won't be covered up. And maybe it'll put some emphasis. Or maybe just something around here that brings some attention to the shirt. Any ideas please post and let me know. Okay I went ahead and sewed this in. Well I sewed in a clip and then I hung the light on the clip. And you have the choice on this light where well, you can have it off or blinking or just on all the time. And I think maybe on all the time is better if I had two maybe it would light up bikers a little bit or something and maybe definitely at night it would show but I'm done shopping for today so I've already been gone three hours at Walmart and Academy but what I might look for is something else either similar or better to hang on this side and something else to try to emphasize the shirt later so it is about 2.38 I started a little bit afternoon so this whole thing took about two and a half hours I guess the next thing I need to do is print out a bunch of business cards because maybe this will generate some conversation.